Hi, welcome into my studio into this pastel seal drawing and another very, very different subject for you. I'm trying to keep pushing the boundaries a bit so you guys and myself can learn a lot. You can see I've dragged out some colors on my image editor just to show myself the kind of range I need for those wet areas that's really bouncing the light around because that's what's attracted me to this drawing. And all I'm doing now while I'm talking over it is just I've got my pastel matte paper, it's kind of a sienna colour, transferred my drawing over onto it, and um, I'm just starting to put in some of the darker elements. So when you put the drawing over onto a pastel matte paper, there's no need to seal it or do anything like that. I'm just using the paper just as it comes out of the packet. Now on this video you know I like to show you guys everything that I do and you'll see me make a big error actually on the background and that's all right because it was a learning experience. Now it was just a simple blue background. I used a harder Conti pastel stick than I should have looking back in hindsight and I repaired that and I've done a whole video just showing that repair in depth. So on this video, when you see it happen, I'm just gonna briefly talk over what I did. But if you want to see the real in-depth way of how I repair the background, take a look at that other video. And it's a free video. It's already on my YouTube channel. It's already on my Patreon art channel. And learning experiences like that are great for the both of us. I learn, I've been doing oils for 20 plus years. I've been doing pastels for a little while as well now and I'm still learning with both mediums and I fully expect to be learning forever. There's no reason that I won't be uh, continuously learning different things. I like to share those uh, learning experiences with you guys as well. So as you can see, I'm just putting in the indications of where the shadow elements are going to be, where the highlights are going to be. And if I pop the reference photo up in this right hand corner, you can more easily see what I'm doing. So just quite subtle lines there. I'm not pushing too hard on the pencil when it's not going to be a black area. Switching back over to my black pastel pencil now for the darker areas. It doesn't really matter so much. When I transferred the outer edge, you can just about see I've used white transfer fur paper there, white graphite paper. Because the edge in places, as you can see on that reference, look at the top of the head, it's very uh, light, like blues, whites, purples up there. And sometimes if you've got a very black line on your paper, it can be difficult to cover because Sometimes the pastel won't cover he easily over a very heavy line of graphite, which is not not a problem if you're looking at say a black line of the mouth, but it could be on the edge. So I wasn't taking any chances and I put white graphite there. Alternatively, you could have um, put some, if you wanted to trace it, you could have put some white pastel over the back of the reference photo and gone over the top with a pen or a pencil. I would put a light la layer of white pastel down on there, could have done it in black as well. So they are alternatives. And I'm just going to carry on putting a few more of these uh, more distinct lines in. Okay, so now I can see where those lights and darks are going to sit. I'm going to switch over from my pencils now, start to work in slightly larger pastels. And any soft pastel could be used for this, but I, I wouldn't particularly want to go too soft. That's very, very soft pastels. They could possibly fill up the tooth of the paper. And when it's completely full, and even pastel mat will fill eventually, then it's going to be more difficult to get details on top, especially if you're relying on pencils. So 
my go-to for under drawings like this is usually um, something like Conti sticks these little small sticks are very hard pastel good for under layers especially under furs because we're going to end up rubbing them right in they don't fill the tooth up easily if you're not pushing hard another v way we could have done it would have been pan pastels and you see me do that on lots and lots of videos and I has asked my um, Patreon members for this video in particular if they wanted to see me do it with pan pastels again or sticks and they wanted the sticks this time so I've done that way could have also used the Rembrandt sticks too or I could have just done it with pencils but as I've said before when you've got a a large-ish drawing you're going to weigh your pencils down very quick and uh, it takes a lot longer to fill the areas in as well so I'm just continuing now with these sticks and you can see I'm it looks a bit ugly looks very ugly at this stage and I'm just blocking areas in my darks because I've got to start somewhere I put the extreme highlight parts in already just roughly so I know where they are and now I'm going to work onto the darks and then start to look at the midtones as well nothing complicated about this this is the groundwork but we've got to get something in place and it's going to give us confidence then as well to start building on that and adding refinement later on. Now the eye on this is going to be very different from a normal um, type of eye that we've probably tackled in the past. It's very very flat. You can't really make out the pupil in there. There's lots of things going on with it. Obviously it's very wet also. So as I say on most of my tutorials, if things are a little bit confusing then what we just need to do is draw and paint what we see in the reference and you can see why I've used toned paper here so easily that highlight shows up the tone that uh, sienna paper is acting as a mid-tone it's much much easier to judge what you've got to do to the point that unless it was a very very vibrant subject and you've seen me do the bee with the flowers and that was vibrant I would even go to the point of if I got white pastel matte paper I'd actually put a layer of paint on it just to tone it down I, I really wouldn't use the white at all so just building up those areas Conti stick again you can see you can get quite sharp edges on those with uh, sharpening them with uh, a little bit of sandpaper and I'm just working back darks to lights lights to darks doesn't really matter all that much on this eye and I'm also trying to punch the colors up a bit as well so you can see I've, I've added a bit more blue in that uh, shadowy area under the top section of the eye And of course, as artists, we can do that. We can punch the colours up, down, the contrast as well. You can see how I'm laying sticks around and then blending them in. That's pushing it into the pastel matte surface. There's a dark stick going in. My darkest stick of all is the Prismacolor new pastel stick it's just a bit darker than others as I mentioned in most videos and in general if you want something very very dark or very very bright a softer 
stick will do the job more so than a pencil. So if you're finding you're failing with a pencil to get that very vibrant colour, very white or very dark, those extremes, try a soft pastel instead. So you can see working around the eye as well, blending in with the finger, that's generally how I work with pastels. And then as I'm going along, I'm assessing, okay, does this need to be lighter, darker, different colour? Can I increase a colour somewhere? Can I make it a bit more contrasty perhaps? And just generally getting things in the right place, roughly the right tone. Don't be looking at any extreme details at all when you're layering in. That's, that's not the way I work at least. You can see some blues going in here in this darker area. So rather than reach for the black, I've put a blue in there that blends in nicely. Gives a bit more interest then for the viewer to look at. And same up here, rather than reach for the white, go on to more of a pink colour. More of a Naples yellow. And lightly blend in that too. You can see I'm not really, I'm trying to reserve that extreme white. I can see later on I'm going to want pure white there. So I need to make sure I've still got plenty of two for the paper where extreme whites are required. Now I'm going to come back in and just add a few more parts to this eye and that's all I'm going to do to the eye at this stage. I'm not going to go detailing it up and I'll come back revisit it when I'm really doing the, the refinement section. Okay so zoom back out and back on to the blocking in stage. So nothing really complicated about this. Just, just all I'm doing is getting in the general um, areas. Don't forget with pastels, we've got the benefit. We can make major changes as we layer on top. So you don't even have to be all that accurate at this stage. It's surprising with, with lots of other mediums or media, you can't really change that much on top you maybe not be able to do a lot of layering but with pastels on a sanded paper such as this or textured paper we can really free ourselves up to try things out knowing that we can make big changes as we progress and add refinement.
if I want to really blend an area, push it into that paper, that's when I pull out these these um, torsions or stumps. The soft ones will give more of a, a blend. It saves you wearing your fingers out as well if you're doing a lot of blending. You can see I'm really don't need a lot of pressure with those. So if you want to move the pastel a lot, that's when I use those those stumps. And you can you can uh, clean them really by just rubbing them across a microfiber cloth. And they're so inexpensive. Just keep a set for your lights and a and a set for your darks. That's all you really need to do. So speeding this section up, and you can see I'm just putting in mid-tones first. General lights in there as well. All looks very messy, then I just blend it all together to get that softness that's essential for this seal. It's a really slick subject, something I haven't tackled before. And then starting to put in a few of these creamier tones you're not always going to have the exact color you want so that's where you do like I've done there and just put a couple of different colors down together and you blend them together with your finger to get that mix and there's certainly no formula or science for that it's a case of give it a go and uh, pluck up a bit of courage or try some on some scrap paper to test out first but I find if you're roughly right that's when we can come back in and refine later So that's the main elements now in place. I can squint, look at my reference photo. I can think, yeah, that's that's all pretty okay at the moment. And now I can start to just look and think, okay, what needs to be lighter, darker? It's as simple as that. I say it in all my videos, but that's the way to progress. Now we've got the map there. Now we can assess the finer adjustments. And even at this stage, those adjustments and those differences are still going to be quite large. So you can see I'm just see I'm laying that colour lightly on top because there's no way, even if I had a set of 10,000, I'm not going to have that exact colour there. Because even on the reference, on the seal itself, it's actually colours laid on top of other colours. It's lighting effects laying and sitting on top of other things. So I can create that by doing the same thing. That's why I'm getting that wetness in there. So you don't always have to go searching for the exact color you need, expecting to find it in your set. Lots of times it's actually going to be a blend of colors. You can see I'm still using those larger sticks, haven't resorted to pencils at all yet. There's no need, there's no detail here as such. I can see I need to go darker in this section. So that's what I'm doing. I'm looking at the reference and thinking, yep, I still need to go darker here. That'll allow me to judge that whiter area under the neck. So I can see I need to go a bit lighter there eventually. Now, lots ask me why I choose certain colors of paper. It doesn't, as long as this mid-tone the pastels are so opaque it doesn't really make that much difference so I could have used a brown for this I could have used the um, the the color I've used the sienna I could have used the gray the reason I use the sienna is when I, whenever I do a subject I don't particularly like to use the same color paper as the subject so if, when I did the red fox I used this sienna paper and it was a similar color to the fox and then I find it makes it much harder to judge the colors that I want 
other people may prefer that it's personal preference but as I say it really only matters when you're blocking in to make things easier to see I fill up pretty much all of the paper or I cover it I don't leave I'm not one of the artists that leave a lot of the paper showing through influence in the subject so it doesn't make a massive difference to me what paper color I use now others may ask why didn't I work the background first and then come forward layering over the top that's an excellent question for those that are thinking that because I've also thought that a lot when I was first starting out the reason I personally leave the blue background or the background in this case is a flat color if I've got a lot of that blue pastel I'm gonna contaminate the seal if I'm pushing on it, pressing on it, although that wouldn't be as big a problem as contaminating the blue with the dark. So if I laid that blue in first, when I've got all this dark pastel lying around on the surface, smudging, blowing sometimes, although it shouldn't be blowing, but you know, sometimes we do, you blow it onto the background perhaps, you don't want that contaminating that color. So I've left it up until now. You can see there, I just put a bit of that purple on top of the uh, seal's head, purples and blues. That's going to really give that wet look up there. So uh, to go back to it, that's why I haven't put the blue in up until now. But there comes a stage in a pastel then, or a painting or whatever, where you've got to get that background actually in. And then it's just a case of trying to keep everything clean. I do that by using things like glassine paper to rest my hand on. So really working on that wet look on top of the head and that's a combination then of those seal color browns and this, this wet look then that's laying on top of it of the blues of those slight purple hues as well. So it's the sitting of the wetness on top of the fur that's going to give that wet effect. And you can see already just by putting a few marks on that's a Faber Castell pastel just a soft pastel it's sitting on top nice and easy and you can see already I've got that slight wet appearance that glow to it and soon I'm gonna have to put the background on so that I can really start to judge these colors correctly and fully Now I'm just getting a couple of these light areas in place because they are so bright. I don't want anything too dark underneath it or it's not going to allow me to get this super brightness 
that I want there, then I'm going to have to start to revert to things like gouache paint, and I don't want to be doing that. So just making sure I've got the highlight actually in the right place and a nice light tone there already. I'm just putting some of this background in. Now this is where I make the mistake. I'm using a Conti stick. It's the exact colour I wanted for the background. It's a little bit bluer perhaps than the reference photo. Difficult to judge on screen but it was the colour I wanted and I figured this Conti stick would just fill in the background a nice even colour and it comes out okay but you can still Later on in the video you see you can still see the background through it. So in hindsight I wouldn't be doing it with a Conti stick. I would definitely be doing it with something softer. So that would be pretty much anything other than a Conti stick. And it would have been a nice easy background to get in. So you ignore what I'm doing here. This is the mistake that I make. It's still okay. It would, probably wouldn't have ruined it but I'm very critical of my own work and I never would have looked at it in the same way again being able to see bits of that paper through it it just wasn't giving me a smooth transition but I figured I would be able to easily put something like a pan pastel or a soft stick over the top of this but it doesn't actually work so that's what that uh, video showing my mistake shows all of the correction of that background so just got that little bit in for now anyway. So if I'd use a soft pastel there, that'd be perfectly fine. And I've just put it in so that I can easily now judge all the tones and all the colors by that little strip of background in there. And I don't need to fill it all in yet. As I mentioned about that contamination earlier on in the video. So you can see, it. using my Karen Dash pencil there, my blackest black of the pencils so it's a good combination of being able to have a sharp point and it's in pencil form but lots of my other pencils are not that dark so that's why I use that particular brand and now you can see it's starting to work a bit more now with the pencils that's how I work so blocking in with the larger pastels then more refinement with the pencils. If you wanted to do it just in pencils, personally I would have done it smaller so I wasn't actually um, using so much pencil. So just adding a few more of these little adjustments and then I'm going to show you where I went wrong and fixed the background but as I mentioned there's a full video on that so it's just going to be a very brief overview. Okay so let's take a look at the background. This is what I did blocked it all in basically with the Conti stick. Blended it all in with my fingers, tapped off the excess, came back in, soft pastel, pan pastel or any other soft pastel would have worked and because I can see the background if you look at the top part you may just work out you can see a bit of the background through it so hence putting on this color I could automatically or instantly see 
it wasn't actually covering with the pan pastel no matter how much I was putting on there so you can see there's a color difference true but I could still see a roughness to the background the beauty of pastels is you can get such super smooth backgrounds and it would not layer on top and I go into all that detail on the other uh, specific fixing video so then I start the process of removing the pastel so that I've got a plain surface to start back on got my vacuum there a stiff brush that's getting as much pastel off as I could then I rub the whole surface with a microfiber cloth to get off even more pastel then I rub the whole surface with a brush and water and as I said check out the other video for details on exactly why I did this then when that was completely dry I came over it with gouache paint and that gave me a great surface then with a slight texture where I could work the pastels back over the top and here you can see I can just go over the pastel now over the gouache underpainting with uh, pan pastels perfectly smooth and fortunately problem fixed okay so zoomed back in now starting to refine a bit get this edge correct you can see where I've had to bring the paint up and over it slightly not a problem now putting the pastel back on top you can see once again I'm using a Karen Dash pencil just because they've got two or three lovely very dark rich browns which once again are difficult to get in in other um, other brands so you can't see a great deal here it is a very very dark area not a lot of highlight or anything in there but just refining the shape refining the edge a bit and get in getting these darks in place Here you can see I'm adding really quite a vibrant blue on top in places but obviously because there's darks under there it's not as vibrant as it would be on a, on a pure paper but that's just how I want it but it's these colour changes, these vibrant areas that's really going to make this drawing stroke painting actually um, come alive you know I talk about a lot how our eyes, our brains seem to be programmed to look for just like a seal, a grey brown colour and you just keep reaching for those. Really study the reference photos and whatever you're working on and look for the real colours and tones that's in there.
now I'm starting to refine that bit more I like to get my photo closer to the reference just so it's easier to flick my eye from one to the other and it doesn't hurt the pastel just laying it on top like this nothing underneath that piece of paper is actually refined yet anyway so it's making no difference and I'm not moving it on there either so starting to use the pencils more now as I'm starting to refine more So in this refinement of the actual fur, you can see I'm going to start to use uh, various pencils to kind of layer. So I'm layering that blue on top now, that's a Geoconda pencil. So you know, you use what you've got over a year and a half, I built up a couple of different sets now. So I got the choice of a few different pencils. You can see how that wet look is starting to become more pronounced. Coming in my white pencil now because I want this highlight to be really, really white. Pushing quite hard as well. just dotting it here and there.
Now here you can see I'm just going to start to float this blue colour on top, so light pressure. So I've still got those browns underneath, but you can see this wet effect now, so it's a reflection of the sky above and perhaps bounced up from the blue water as well, that's what's given all of these lighter colour tones, these blues and purples. And you can see it layers very easily on this pastel matte paper, so don't go cut in costs by using an inferior paper, it's going to be frustrating for you. Make sure you get something that will hold some layers, so make sure at the least it's a sanded paper, or look at my video on YouTube where I create my own sanded paper. So just going to add a few more highlights here. This is my Carbothello pencil, it doesn't need to be extremely light. And the pencil is a bit harder so I can sharpen it to a finer point. And um, I'm going to end the video here, part one, and then on part two we can really start to do the refinement and get more colours in there and make it look a lot more realistic. So just a few more of these reflective blue touches around here. Quite happy with the way it's coming so far. 
learning experience for me as well and hope you've enjoyed this part one video. Just wanted to quickly mention my Patreon channel for those looking for even more in-depth art instruction. It's packed full of pastel videos, oil videos as well, and those videos are being added to new ones every single month. I have videos for the complete beginner that have never done pastels or oils before with just limited supplies. And I take you from the very first blocking in all the way through to the final detailed drawings and paintings. I've also got some really unusual subjects as well and in all of my videos I always take you through all the details. You see everything I do, how I create my work. But it's not just for beginners, it's also for novices and I also show the best artwork that I've ever done as well. And this particular elephant video spans six hours so you know you're going to see tons and tons of details, tips and techniques. And as mentioned, I've got lots of oil videos on there too, so there really is something for everybody and you get access to hundreds of hours worth of videos for just $4. Now over a thousand members strong, hope to see you there soon.